nuclear war than we ever have been before. This is one of the main reasons why I'm committed to doing all that I can to send President Trump back to the White House where he can once again serve us as our commander in chief. Because I am confident that his first task will be to do the work to walk us back from the brink of war. We cannot be prosperous unless we are at peace. And we can't live free as long as we have a government that is retaliating against its... Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all having a great and wonderful day. And I notice there are some people coping and thinking that Donald Trump is scared of, you know, of, of debating Kamala Harris. Well, that's the insane thing because he's not. It's just they keep on changing the rules, but I digress. But Trump is building an army here. He is building an army of unity that I think we haven't seen in, uh, well, a very long time in politics. And it, what we have here is Tulsi Gabbard going and supporting and endorsing Donald Trump, which is probably one of the greatest things you could possibly have in our current country today. And we have a bit of things that we have to go over here too, because some of these things is a pretty huge deal on how the Democrats are really, really panicking uh, about the whole situation of, uh, uh, of what's been going on. Because it doesn't look like they are as close as they seem to be to winning this election, and it's a real nail-biter for sure. So what we have this here is uh, from uh, SENR uh, saying, Tulsi Gabbard endorses Trump for president. Uh, so, uh, it says, former Democrat Hawaii Representative Tulsi Gabbard has endorsed Donald Trump for re-election this November. Gabbard, a veteran, gave her endorsement of Trump during the former president's press conference in Detroit this morning. The press conference followed Trump's Monday morning visit to Arlington Cemetery on the third anniversary of the nationals with, uh, nation's uh, withdrawal from Afghanistan, which left 13 United States service members deceased. And, by the way, um, a lot of people were angry about Trump uh, not showing up there for, uh, uh, you know, uh, what showed, that showed up there. And uh, they were angry, like, why is this man here? He's just a disgrace to the military people. Well, from what I gathered, is from the information I was looking at, was a lot of people were apparently the families of those fallen soldiers wanted Trump to be there. They wanted Trump to actually be present at the place and did not invite Biden. Which, by the way, um, if that was the case, even if we wanted to say not the plans were not the 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 families didn't invite them there, Biden was not apparently invited, right? Neither was Harris. So that kind of says volumes about the thirteen members that have unfortunately uh, passed away in that horrific event from the uh, Afghanistan withdrawal, and they didn't want. The families did not want Harris or Biden there, but invited Trump instead. That speaks volumes about this administration and what people actually think of these guys. Goes on to say, I know that President Trump understands the grave responsibility that a president and commander-in-chief bears for every single one of our lives, Gabbard said. He gives us in his heart and the decisions that he makes. Gabbard touted Trump's first term in office, which saw no new wars, and his efforts to end a 20-year-long war in Afghanistan. He exercised the courage that we expect from our commander-in-chief in exhausting all measures of diplomacy, he said, she said, noting Trump's meeting with adversaries to the United States in the pursuit of peace. The same cannot be said about Kamala Harris, Gabbard said of the vice president. In fact, the opposite is true, and we're all living through this reality today as this, as this administration has us facing multiple wars on multiple fronts in regions around the world and closer to the brink of nuclear war than we ever have been before. So, we're going to go over a few things here of what Tulsi Gabbard has said here in her actual note. This is what she's actually said on the pen of X and what else. So, here we go. With all of you, my brothers and sisters in uniform, especially on this day of all days, I had the privilege of joining President Trump this morning at Arlington Cemetery where he joined two Gold Star families and loved ones of Staff Sergeant Hoover and Sergeant G, both of whom were two of the 13 killed in the Abbey Gate attack three years ago today in Kabul. And I can tell you as we were there, as he laid a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier, 
joining these Marines' loved ones, I felt the sorrow that he shared with them in their loss. I felt and saw his sincere appreciation for these servicemen and women who paid the ultimate price and their loved ones who continue to grieve to this day. This is personal for me as I know it is for so many of you here. This is real. It's not just words. I first deployed to Iraq in 2005 with the Hawaii Army National Guard as a member of Charlie Med. As those of you who were deployed during that time know, it was the height of the war and sadly we took many casualties. And every day we were confronted with that high human cost of war and that sadness as we boarded the plane when we left that we were leaving some of our brothers and sisters behind. Only to lose others when we got home to suicide. So I mean what I say when I share with you that I know that President Trump understands the grave responsibility that a president and commander-in-chief bears for every single one of our lives. Yeah, and this is something that only people that go to war is. People are like always want to say, oh, let's just go to war. That's the greatest thing we could do. Oh, let's just do this. Oh, we have to go protect this country. But do you understand the amount of people that we have to sacrifice in order to complete that war? Sometimes it is too great of a travesty to allow this to happen. And of course, uh, Tulsi Gabbard is obviously allowing this, is, uh, is uh, supporting Trump in this manner. Now, we're going to go here and talk about the actual situation of Tulsi Gabbard and everything that has to do with what's going on. So, for example, we're going to be talking about uh, how these people, such as uh, activist uh, Cornell West, leaves the Green Party and will run for president as an independent because, obviously, uh, Kamala Harris does not have all the support from the people that she that she needs and people like Cornel West is taking voters away from Kamala Harris and hurting her indiscriminately and uh, we have here that that Kamala Harris was trying to bribe Cornel West and put him in a cabinet so that she could secure a easier win. And, uh, can you specify if you can you mentioned uh, offering positions resources uh, where you offered a position in the Harris administration, any financial incentives to drop out? Oh, I mean, there was definitely various kind of offers. I won't go into the concrete details of it. I, I really won't because I don't. I, I don't even want to make that the uh, focus. Well, of let's it. let's just say but they did not. Say they did. They did not. They did not offer you the janitor's position. They offered you something <laughs> something something relatively high up. Uh, well, I, I don't think it was that high up because believe me, brother. The highest position in the in the empire that can't say a word about genocide. For me, it's just a place in Dante's Inferno, man. And that's the lowest litmus test of morality to oppose genocide. And when you deny genocide, when you actually enable genocide, uh, uh, that cannot be the only option to fascism. Right. Did they uh, just one more on this? Did they uh, sure. offer you? Did they offer you uh, a cabinet position, a lower position, and offer to pay off any of your campaign debt? Well, they they offered serious substantive conversation about all of those that could lead toward some real. Gotcha. Yeah, so things are not doing too great for Kamala because she wants these people out so she can get more votes. Then you have Jill Stein, which is will also remain on the uh, or on the ballot and for, for to run as president. So these people are really just sucking away Kamala's support from voters, and they want to actually still win. And as long and the longer that they are, or they are in, the longer that Kamala Harris is really hurting. And I wouldn't be surprised if she's offering certain same things for Jill Stein to stay on the board. Now what we have here is, uh, you know, uh, great old uh, Don Lemon really uh, yeah, you know, kind of contradicting himself on the situation of Kamala Harris uh, <laughs> and his positions. 
So uh, here we go. That she started on truancy, which is what a lot of people have been hitting my Twitter feed about how, you know, that program from their their criticism is it separated black children from their families. Mm -hmm. She talks about the fact that, you know, yeah, there were a lot of tough decisions that were made, but I stand by them. She's going to have to talk about that uh, more fully. Kamala Harris never sent parents to jail for their kids truancy. Yeah, so it's not looking too great for Kabbalah Harris here, especially stupid Don Lemon that can't keep his points correctly because he obviously has to toe the line for, you know, Kamala Harris. Now, what we have here is from the actual from the DNC and MSNBC saying that, well, apparently Kamala Harris's votes are not as great as, they, as they're making it out to be in the public eye because, uh... They're actually a lot close, if not dead even, from their from the non-public eye, from their underground source, their internal source. And uh, it's a lot closer than Kamala Harris really wants it to be. And uh, she is actually most likely in trouble of losing the presidential race. A top super PAC associated with the Harris campaign uh, has let it be known to some reporters that their internal polling is, in their words, a little less rosy than some of the public polling. Some other Democratic uh, polling firms that I've talked to in the last couple of days say the same. They say the battleground states are virtually tied. Um, in a lot of the public polls right now, we're seeing Harris up a few points, often within the margin of error. They're suggesting it's a little closer than that. And as we well know, polling has been pretty off the last couple of cycles and in favor of, on election day, Republicans, Republicans being undercounted in the polls, therefore doing better on election day. Joe Biden was up by several points in the polls they ended up winning by four years ago. So believe me, Democrats coming out of Chicago, they feel really good. Uh, the vice president is going to be on the road some next week, also beginning the debate prep. They feel like they have the wind at their back. But there's a lot of work ahead because this race is going to be decided most likely by a razor thin margin, despite how flailing Trump seems to be at the moment. It's going to be close. And Chris Matthews, I, I, I remember the real clear politics average in 2020 in Michigan going into Election Day was Biden plus nine. Uh, there, yeah. there were polls that showed Biden winning Wisconsin by double digits. Of course, Everybody thought that that uh, Hillary Clinton was going to win. I talked to her pollsters after the exit polls at 6.30, 6.45, and they said the question is whether we win six or seven swing states. Everything's looking great for us tonight. Uh, so, yeah, that, I mean, Democrats have a reason to, to, to play scared, to play as they've all said. Like we're three, you know, uh, three points behind, a field goal behind. So yeah, it's not looking too great for Kamala Harris. At least it seems it's going to be close. This is the reason why we cannot be trusting the public polls that are being released today. Because as of right now, they're releasing public polls that doesn't seem to be true true. And these are all polls that will happen before uh, the, uh, the JFK nomination and Tulsi Gabbard nomination. Now we're going to see that, uh, that you know Harris is still leading in the polls. But it's going to be very weird that that's happening considering the fact that he has a coalition of a lot of people joining him and a lot of people supporting Donald Trump. I think it's a lot closer than people are making it realize or what the polls are saying. And if anything goes to measure to what Don Lemon is doing with, you know, with the polls in particular where people are saying, oh, well, I'm voting Trump and even Don Lemon's doing this. It's not looking good for Kamala, for Kamala Harris. And I think it's a lot tighter than what the polls are suggesting. And it's it, it's going to be a doozy. All right, guys. That's it for the video. Like, subscribe, share. As always, take care, my friends. I'm disgusted by what I see in public. Even people closest to us can't be trusted. This is algorithmic disease, the social media.